Bonjour, it's Codger Biker here, and today, nothing on my mind but my helmet. Okay, so this is my uh, previous ADV helmet, which is uh, LS2 Pioneer, a uh, helmet I really like, wore for most of last year. My only concern with it was always, um, well it's a cheap crash helmet, it cost £100 I think, uh, but you can see it has all the safety stickers, um, but it's always at the back of your mind, you get what you pay for and you've got your brain inside of it. So just from the sensible point of view, if the worst happens, is it better to be in a more expensive helmet or a cheap one like this? I don't know. Anyway, the plus points are very, very good field of view. I don't know if you can see that. And a big opening, a good peak on the top, which is removable. You can take the peak off, you can take the visor off and just wear it as either um, an ordinary crash helmet with the visor or with goggles. So somebody who's not very keen on being behind a visor, um, it's nice to have the option to be work, to be able to wear goggles, which uh, fit in nicely. I sometimes wear goggles with it. But uh, the best thing about this helmet for me is the internal sun visor. That's all my helmets so far. I've had an internal sun visor, but I prefer to ride like that. So you get a bit of protection from insects, the sun, but you've still got plenty of air coming in. Now obviously for motor vlogging the air can be a bit of a problem so I had to put a bit of uh, extra um, shield in there and underneath to reduce wind noise. You can see a dead cat in there. But all in all not a bad motor vlogging helmet. Nice flat sides for attaching uh, mounts. Um, you've got this big vent here which if you're not motor vlogging is very good. You can open it up let plenty of air in. I don't need to because I ride with the visor up most of the time, as I said. So uh, for its price, you know, it's an excellent helmet with lots of good features. Things I don't like, I don't like the uh, ratchet um, fastener, particularly. Um, I did find when I first got it that the it was very difficult to uh, torque because the cheek pads pushed in so hard. So uh, I had to squash those down quite a bit. All in all, I was a bit sceptical about getting an ADV helmet as I hadn't worn them in the past. I'd always stuck with the old fashioned ones. Um, most notably my HJC, which has got an internal sun visor and is very quiet. So what would I say about this? It's very light, 1450 grams, but it's quite noisy. Um, it's quite a noisy crash helmet. Good to hear the engine noise of your bike. When I got my new helmet, I thought uh, the bike wasn't on at times. So you can hear the engine noise of the bike well, um, but it is noisy, particularly in the winter when it's uh, windy. So I used to tend to wear this as my summer helmet and wore my HJC as a winter helmet. But um, some days, particularly in the winter, when the sun's very, very bright and low down, you do need a peak and my HJC didn't have one. Once you've had a peak, you don't go back, basically. Not on an ADV bike anyway. I have to say, I think the peaked helmet would have been a better option this morning with this low sun. It's not just a fashion thing, although they do look better. I mean, hey, it looks like Halo's Master Chef. Sorry, Master Chief. Very cool. But always at the back of my mind was uh, I'm wearing a, I think this was £85 or so when I bought it. Um, it didn't come with a pin lock. The pin lock was actually £30. So by the time you put a pin lock to it, you know, you, you're up into probably £120, £130. Still cheap. Not the cheapest. So riding this helmet with the visor open, I really do like it. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't owe me anything. It's just that constant niggle. It was cheap, cheap helmet. Your head is inside a cheap helmet. <coughs> So my anxiety about cheap crush helmets eventually prompted me to look for a new one and I came down to a choice between two, given that I need to do motor vlogging as well as uh, keep myself safe. 
uh, it was between either the Array uh, X4 or the one that I actually did buy it, the Shoei Hornet ADV. Now I chose the Shoei Hornet ADV purely and simply because I do motor vlogging and um, it's just a nice shape for attaching a camera to. Now you do lose that front vent but as I say I tend to ride with the visor open so it doesn't affect me. So I chose this helmet on its mounting capability. I've seen uh, that uh, Itchy Boots wears an Array X4 and she's got a Velcro mount that fits around the bottom. I looked at those mounts, very expensive. Come with a mount that just straps through the crash helmet and uh, it's very solid and I can fit the camera right to the front of it which gives a good view and there's no sign of the camera in your eye line. In fact I can't tell if it's on or not um, without looking in the mirror so it doesn't get in the way because you tend to ride at that angle. Like the LS2 it has a nice opening, plenty uh, of uh, visibility, good wide angle. Uh, it has a better visor in that the LS2 is quite pointed, although it claims to be uh, optically pure, I'm not sure that it is. This one is curved smoothly and uh, just the whole helmet just feels to be, I can't really put it into words, but it just feels better quality. Whether that's because I paid 400 and odd quid for it, I don't know. It's just a psychological thing, but again, I tend to ride with the visor open. So this one, one disadvantage, it has no drop down internal visor. Shoei and Array don't fit them. I think they claim that it compromises the sort of safety of the helmet because they use special phones and things inside there and to have the visor sliding in and out is uh, not ideal from at least from their point of view. So it does have a glasses slot as indeed does the LS2 so I wear safety glasses in the winter or sunglasses in the summer or I just get used to riding with the visor down, which I think is probably better for the audience as it reduces the wind noise. I like the LS2, it does come with a nose guard and also a chin guard, which is good because the microphone can fit inside there. Uh, I'm not going to go over the motor vlogging setup, but if you're interested, let me know and I'll go through that. As I say, the weather's bad at the moment, so um, riding's not uh, always possible. Um, Another negative, it's very heavy. I think it's probably at least 200 grams more than the LS2. So, uh, and you do feel it. I know some people say you don't feel it. You do feel it. I don't notice it particularly most of the time. When I was crossing a bridge the other day with a very, very powerful crosswind, I did notice it. For the first time I'm getting some off the team. To be fair to the helmet, uh, John also, who was riding with me, mentioned that the wind on the bridge was uh, very, very noticeable. Um, I hadn't said anything to him and he's got a shark um, normal helmet without a peak and he'd said that. So I think it was just a windy day, but there's one time I noticed that this is a heavier helmet than the LS2. Possibly that's down to it being safer. I don't know, the materials used are perhaps higher quality. Who can tell? So you've got vents at the uh, forehead here and you've got vents on the top and there are exhausts at the back. Exhaust here, through the back of there. You can remove this easily enough. So it's easily removable. The visor, spring holder, you just pull the lever and it comes off. Uh, this helmet does come with a pin lock which, you can, which I have fitted. It's inside there so I didn't have to buy an extra pin lock which is something when you pay that much money I suppose. So all in all it's a much quieter helmet, so much so that, as I said, I wasn't sure the bike was running at first when I first got it. You can hear the bike, but I was used to hearing it a lot louder. Um, it also very squashy on my face uh, makes it difficult to articulate, which you need to be able to do when you're motor vlogging. So I've taken the cheek pads, which are removable, as are the ones in the LS2, and squashed them under books for a few nights, which seems to have uh, eased it a little bit. It's quite a difficult helmet to put on and off, um, but once it's on it feels very secure. That's one negative from it. I find it quite difficult to put on and take off. It's particularly when you've got the chin guard on, uh, you know, it's quite restrictive. But again, I'm sure that will just uh, ease up a little bit when I've worn it for a while. 
Goggles do fit inside, I have worn them. Um, take this nose piece out before putting them on. And uh, yeah, there's so not much to choose between the two helmets really, given the price difference of at least £300 difference between the two. Um, but they're just there on the side of caution when it comes to safety, which is why I always have a white helmet because the police wear them and I think studies have been made that suggest that white helmets are more visible. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Maybe people just unconsciously think or associate it with the police and notice you. Who knows? Once the helmet is on, the visibility is brilliant. Uh, as I say, it came with the pin lock, so no steaming up. I'm not a massive fan of pin locks. I always find they give you a little bit of internal reflection, but it's not too bad on this one, even on a sunny day like today. Of course, you've got the peak ever useful. Um, there's no way I'm ever going back to a non-peaked crash helmet. Once you get used to it, there's no going back. And I find no buffeting at all on my bike. And this is a bike that's notorious for helmet buffeting. So you like to think if you spend a bit more, you get a safer helmet. So um, I was always a bit uneasy about a cheap crash helmet. So um, hopefully I won't ever need to find out what you'd like to think that spending a bit more might give you a little bit more safety. It's certainly a lot quieter. Okay, that's about it for now. Wish you good weather wherever you are. And I wish it would stop raining here. Codge Biker is out.